How's it going everyone? Taki here. Today we're going to take a look at what is billed as the world's first 5G rugged phone. And while that may not be completely accurate, this is the first rugged phone that I've seen that's fairly capable in terms of gaming performance. The company behind this device has reached out to me in the past to review their other phones, but I've never been interested in doing so because they typically come with subpar MediaTek chips. The Blackview 6000 Pro comes with an octa-core MT6873 processor with 4 A76 cores and 4 A55 cores clocked at 2 GHz. Beyond this, we have a Mali G57 MP4 GPU, 8 GB of RAM, 256 GB of storage, a 5280 mAh battery, and a 6.3 inch IPS display with a resolution of 2300 by 1080. I want to start off first by showing my Antutu benchmark score because it's the only one of the two that I typically use that will run on this device. I got a score of 318,000 with a CPU and GPU score slightly over 100,000. I would have also used Geekbench, but Blackview seems to block the functionality of that application, but they aren't the only one with this processor doing that. You should always check the refresh rate of any MediaTek device before you buy them because they have been known to use some wonky refresh rates, but this one is only slightly over 60 FPS and I haven't noticed any issues during my tests. There's not a whole lot to talk about the design of this phone since everything here looks fairly standard, but what I will say is that this phone is actually thinner than the real first 5G rugged phone by a substantial amount. With that said, there are two things that I'm not a fan of with the 6000 Pro, first of which is the rubber back that probably serves a good purpose for its intended audience, but it's a huge lint magnet. The only saving grace is that you can obviously wash this device to clean it since it is waterproof. The second thing that's kind of disappointing is the fact that this phone does not have an SD card slot, but this does come with a beefy storage that easily held all of the ROMs and games that I used in this video. I want to start off first by taking a look at the Android gaming performance on the 6000 Pro using a collection of popular games. Now let's move over to emulation, starting off first with Nintendo, and I will just point out that the image on screen is going to be shifted slightly over to the bottom in what I can only assume is a result of that hole punch front facing camera. I was pretty pleased with the performance of GameCube and Wii on this phone, and it's actually the first time that I got better performance using the official build of Dolphin versus the now dated MMJ build. All of the games here are running at native resolutions with the GameCube games forced into widescreen. It's all you.
3DS on this chip is a bit of a mixed bag, with some demanding games running very well, while easy to emulate games have some severe graphical glitches. Shall we then? I also tested out several Dreamcast games, but I don't have the audio for the footage that you're seeing on screen right now. This processor is pretty much overkill for any Dreamcast game that you'd want to play, so you shouldn't expect any issues at all. Finally, let's finish off with PlayStation 1 and work our way over to PlayStation 2. For PSP, I'm using the Vulkan backend and I have the renderer set to 2x native resolution. I've said it many times before, but PlayStation 2 emulation is garbage on Android with the Daemon PS2 emulator, no matter what phone you use. But there are games that are playable on this phone. The quality just isn't high enough to make me want to choose this over Windows gaming handheld or official hardware. I did test out the Play emulator off camera, and some things were slightly playable, but it pales in comparison to this trash emulator. Hopefully Apple's push towards ARM-based products gives us some proper PS2 development soon. Anyway, that's it for this showcase of the 6000 Pro. This thing is currently on sale over on Kickstarter, and if you want to buy one, there's a non-affiliate link in the description box below. If you have any questions about this device, feel free to leave those below, and consider leaving a like on this video to support my work. I'll catch you next time with another review. Happy gaming, everyone. Talkie out.